Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and today we're going to start part two of cascading style sheets with Adobe Flex. And last time we dealt with a label component, and let's do the same thing again here. So let's drag a label to the screen, and we'll type in here my label. There we go. And let's add some styles to it. Let's bold it. Let's make it larger. Let's change the uh, the font, and let's underline it. So let's go to the source view and see what we have here. And as we said last time in our part one of this series, we're actually generating the cascading style sheet information right in the MXML tag. I'll go ahead and put some uh, spaces in here, some returns, so we can actually look at what we just did. And uh, as we said last time as well, uh, what Adobe has done, it's created what's called a camo case. And basically, if you look at typical HTML cascading style sheets, this would be font hyphen weight. Uh, and what Adobe has done is uh, they've taken out the hyphen and they've used a capital. And so we'll find out you can actually use either one of these uh, when we embed this style sheet. So let me show you how to embed a style sheet. You can embed style sheets directly in your application, or you can bring them in externally. Last time in part one, we brought one in externally. Let's embed one in this one. So you go MX, type in style script. There you go. There's our styles tag. Let's close it, and you have an opening and closing tag. And at this point, you can put any type of selector in here. Now, what is a selector? A selector determines what rules apply to what. There are three types of selectors, global, type and style name. Global and type only run at the application level where style name can be declared anywhere in the application. And style name takes the highest precedence and we'll see that in this tutorial. So enough with the theory, let's get started. So let's put in a type selector which refers to our components and this one is the label so we'll go L-A-B-E-L. -E it has to be spelled correctly with the right caps. Put our little curly brackets in here and let's space it out. And then we're just going to cut and paste the uh, style elements that were generated in the uh, MXML right into the style tags. So I'm going to cut those and paste those in those style tags in the label component. I have to do a little bit of uh, rearranging here and scripting. I'm going to take out the equal signs and put in colons and take out the uh, apostrophes. Colon and semicolon. And for font size, put in a colon and semicolon and for family font let's put in a colon and put in a semicolon now let me just say here as far as family font you basically want to keep the quotes in there now you don't need the quotes unless there's a space so if I had like New Times Roman in here you have spaces in between that family font so you're gonna need those quotes so I just put the quotes in all the time and for the last one Go ahead and put your colon and your semicolon at the end. And let's run this and see what we get. Well, we get the exact same thing here. However, um, we're no longer using the uh, elements from the MXML tag, but we're actually bringing them in from our embedded style sheet. So let's get rid of that and do a little bit more work. So that's a type selector. Let's take a look at a style name selector. Style name selectors always start with a period. And so in order to sh demonstrate this, let's make a few copies of our label. So I'll go ahead and grab this and copy it a few times. So I have three labels here. Let's go back to design view. They all sit on top of each other. I just copied them. I didn't change the XY values. So actually, let's move these down. That's, there you go. And let's go back. And now you can see the Y values are different, so the labels are at different places. So here we go. And now let's create a style name selector. So style names start with a period, and we're going to call this green text. Let's put in our curly brackets. Let's put in our color element. Uh, colon and let's make it um, 00FF00 semicolon and let's run that and see what we got. Well that's not quite enough though. Can't run it yet. We have to take this green text and actually put it in label 2. Let's do that. Let's go down to label 2. Let's open this up so we can see all of it. Here we go. And let's go to label two and we're going to start typing and we're going to go style 
And see how suddenly we have our code hints helping us style name. And what do we have to put in for style name? Green text. Okay, so we're in green text without the period. And then let's run that and see what we get. And so you see, certainly label 2 is now green while the other labels are black, showing you that the uh, style name type takes precedence over the type name. Our final tag is our global tag, so let's put in a global tag. Now you'd use global tag when, for example, you want to set the text for the entire document, a certain font family. So the global basically applies to all the elements in the document, but takes the least precedence of all the other tags. Let's set a global tag here, global, and uh, curly brackets. And let's use font family again. Okay, let's paste that in. So let's put the font family in there as Times New Roman. And let's run the program. And immediately you see there was no change. Why was there no change? Because global has the least precedence. So if we want that to appear, we have to go to our type selector and take out the font. Let's do that right now. Let's remove Georgia from the type selector. And now let's run the program. We now have this global Times New Roman, but not everything's the same. Let's change one of them using the uh, style name selector. We're going to put a new style name selector in there. We're going to call it period my new font. Let's use our curly brackets. And let's go ahead and copy and paste here. And I've found from uh, years of coding that copying and pasting can be very helpful. If you have a variable name and you type in the wrong variable, make a spelling error, sometimes it can be difficult to find that spelling error. So copying and paste can take you a long ways. Uh, so I'm going to put in Verdana here. And let's go ahead and put this new font name down in tag 1. So let's go down to uh, label 1. Start with style name. And let's paste that in there. And now let's run and see what happens. And you can see now label 1 is changed because it takes precedence over the global variable in label 2 and 3. Okay, real important here. Let me go back and remind you of something we had done in part 1, and that we had taken an entire cascading style sheet and placed it in the Over the Rhine project. Let's take a look at that again. I'm going to bring up that blue plastic style sheet that we worked with last time. And notice when I had done the uh, presentation before, I actually skipped over these dots and didn't say anything about them, these periods, all these style names. And they weren't applied because they were not actually in any of the uh, style names uh, selectors inside of my MXML tags. However, it didn't make a difference because they just they didn't cause us an error either. So I skipped over that in the last lecture. So you can look at these now, and you can actually go back and apply these uh, style name types in your application. So I just want to show you where that came from. And I had skipped over that last time, but now you understand what a style name selector is. Okay, one more thing to do. Let's go back to our CSS uh, style sheet. And we've created an embedded style sheet, and I'm going to go, you know what, embedded style sheets are okay, but I really like to work with the external style sheets. Let's turn this into an external style sheet. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Go to your source file, right-click on that, go New, and create CSS file. And I'm just going to call this My Styles. Finish. And that creates a blank style sheet. I'm going to go back to my application and make the mail application. I'm just going to cut all the styles out of that application. There you go. And paste that into my style sheet. And save. And go back to my application. And I'm going to call that external style sheet in, just like I did last time, get rid of that last style. Um, closing tag, put it in internally to the first one, and here's your code hinting for source. Just type in the source name, my styles, CSS, and now run the program. 
and there you go, the very same thing. So there's more than one way to do things in Adobe Flex. I've found that working with external styles is the most powerful approach.